Ready? Yeah. <laughs> I am. Yeah. Well, I'm Andres Peñarchila. I was born in Venezuela, moved to Colombia, and been living in Finland about 14 years. So I come from business. I made an, my own company. I graduated from Metropolia, by the way. So yeah, wow. from the Murmagi campus. Okay. So I did my bachelor's in business in there. So I created my own company. Then during Corona times, the company <clears throat> went, uh, I, my income was substantially smaller. Mm -hmm. So I was forced to, to search for some work. So I worked for other uh, university. And then I, this position that I'm currently in, I manage <clears throat> the Nexus incubator. And that's what I'm doing right now. Um, mm -hmm. I'm the project manager for Nexus. Meaning the project manager is the one who creates the content. Mm -hmm. Content. So we have mentors, and when I I arrived to the job, so there was some homework before mm -hmm. when the persons who hired me. But my work was to set up the workshops, set up the net uh, mentors as well, and some of the mentors, and then recruit teams and so on. All what involved the whole project of mm -hmm. Nexus. Now, would you like to introduce what is Nexus Incubator, yeah. where it's focusing on, and how it's going so? Nexus is focusing deep tech, AI, sustainability, but these subjects are very, very broad. So deep tech involves so many different areas, but these were selected um, along with the dean of the faculty. Mm. So this is relevant for them. And Kumpula Campus has been uh, already having some in industry cooperation. So I came in and we started to build incubators. So there are pre-incubators and incubators. So Nexus is an incubator. It's a six months program where people join and they learn business. So meaning this is not a research project. This is a business incubator. The incubator is for people who have already an idea, <clears throat> uh, most likely validated in the marketplace, most likely with some kind of uh, validation or customer traction or so on. So the teams that come to Nexus uh, are gonna have two mentors from the industry. There is six mentors and 20 teams. Uh, we have uh, the applications open for Nexus batch two, and we expect the same amount of um, teams and our mentors are from so many industries. Nokia, Amazon Web Services, um, mm -hmm. we have Porsche, we have oh. Visa Lab, Barzilla, and so on. Big players. Yeah, Helsinki Incubators is the, the name brand of uh, mm -hmm. all these incubators. We operate within the University of Helsinki. So we are part of the structure of the university. And we are here to to enhance or to foster the entrepreneurial intake of this research. As you know, the University of Helsinki is the so-called Ulyapist in Finland, mm -hmm. which is basically research. And this research haven't seen the light. So what are the incubators? We have four campuses and one pre-incubator an incubator per campus. BK, we have circulator and biosphere incubator. Uh, in the city center, we have Sado and Tremor incubator. And then in Meilahti, we have all <laughs> kind of things like LX and then Spark, mm. that would be the incubator. But there are other kind of structures with, within Meilahti. This, the first week is the kickoff, so we have mentors coming from abroad and right. the teams and the mentors will meet and they will ar uh, agree on the ways how how we start to run from the kickoff people will start to pitch them idea so they will pitch at least three one minute or three minutes pitch every mentor that comes to nexus and every speaker they work on pro bono basis because mm. they have seen a value and some of our mentors are also um, going to be speakers in these weeks, so experts. Right. So Fernando is one of our mentors. Uh, he comes from Baisala, and he will be speaking about these subjects because he has the experience from the industry, how they can um, 
what are the expectations from both ends basically mm -hmm. he has been also an investor translating tech into commercial language this is a very key thing especially for research groups yeah. so shorter uh, in one sentence what you do what is the value proposition mm -hmm. and then so on because as you know the industry you have one minute to catch a person if yeah. you don't explain that you, i mean you you lost them forever i have funny stories uh, from batch one researchers uh, or people in general they don't like to feel uncomfort or mm. challenge mm. and from day one i told them you are coming here to be uncomfortable because yeah, uncomfortness make you grow and once you grow uh, on the pitching skills and communication, this is a, a skill for life because mm -hmm. you need this in every single career. Yeah. Yes. So come closer. Would you like to introduce yourself, Pedro? Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Pedro Gensini. I'm also part of the Helsinki Incubator team. Uh, I, ha I manage the Biosphere Incubator program. So it's basically, I believe Andres already introduced what a, an incubator is from our perspective and what we do. But then in our case, is a basically all the bioeconomy and circularity, decarbonization, all the environmental uh, solutions or products. Uh, we touch upon those topics on our incubator. So in Helsinki Incubators, I'm the person responsible of that, uh, of managing the program and helping the startups on this front to to further develop their solutions up to the point that either they have an MVP or they are ready to go to market or they are ready to get an investment. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing, well, as me personally, I have to design the program. So I choose all the topics. I contact yeah. the experts. I contact, I try to contact and set up the network of mentors with Alfonso Gutierrez. Uh, in addition to that, I also uh, plan the workflow that the teams should have along the program, set up the milestones, uh, define the methodologies that we're going to use, uh, produce part of the material, like templates, like a theoretical material that they have, like set them ready, and do administrative work in general. Yeah, well, going back to that subject, um... <clears throat> Being uncomfortable is a norm in entrepreneurship. So if you cannot pitch in front of people or few people, then your message is not going to be delivered. So big takeaways, the people come to the programs to, to learn how to communicate to, to the basics of business and to have direct contact to the industry. If they don't have it, Mm. so they can gain it through the program yeah the, the, some of these um workshops uh, weeks are joined with biosphere mm. and upcoming some joint sessions with tremor incubator so this is one of them uh we will have the joint session this is helsinki in innovation services the the transfer tto transfer of technology organization uh, from the university and they will be handling the subject why this is important because some of the research is linked to the ip of the university and the university needs to check if they are interested in that research and um, they will help them to 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 st establish the patents and the whole patenting process and then big seven yeah pitch so uh, there is a lot of pitching here. You saw the pitching. You saw teams pitching. Mm, yeah, what you I did. Think, what do you think of the process? Mm, I really like the idea that you kind of like, not force, that's the wrong word, but, but <laughs> like encourage the people or uh, participants to pitch uh, in mm. each session. Is it like, uh, is it some kind of like rooting turns or is it like everybody has to pitch uh, at the beginning of each time we I have turns remember. okay we, but most likely i handpicked those mm -hmm. people yeah who were not pitching before mm -hmm. but they really did develop during during the spring in my opinion because i i think i visited at the very beginning and then once somewhere in the middle and then i was in your demo day so like i could see the development and how they kind of like evolution yeah yeah exactly 
okay what is the science of public speaking <laughs> yeah that, that's that's <laughs> what interests me yeah that's how he calls this and that's that's the surprise <laughs> but i can tell you a little bit he's very good on reading people's behavior and a public speaker needs to change it on the fly mm -hmm. so the science can be that um highlight of being able of reading your audience and change your target or your pitch doing or your delivery of the message mm -hmm. while you see right. the, the audience might be yeah. but is is the expert who's coming so. yeah but there is also this scientific like he he based his teaching on a scientific research on how the body language transmits certain images and transmits certain type of a, a message to the people so it's that the way you should be standing in front of a of a public the way you should move your hands the way, like different postures like if you are like tied yourself yeah, yeah. and Manu, talking yeah. and like when you're more open and welcoming and it depends he teaches all all these points uh, for the for mm. the public to understand because it's not the same uh, to talk to different audiences and to talk in different contexts and that's something that we try to teach our uh, right. teams that comes to our programs some of important here things are sales as you saw there some of sales our... is uh, sonia's forte <laughs> yeah. my favorite chapter very good so one of our mentors will come to, to speak about this is very important you have to sell your your business at the end mm. uh sales in digital era this is very important because the rules have changed so you need to be able to engage with people in digital matters and also face to face then what else is there uh, storytelling as a thing uh, that's one of my subjects uh, to pitch your idea or to pitch mm. your business you you need to tell a story if you fail to tell the story of how in one minute or three minutes to catch people attention well like um i would possibly introduce like different tactics different yeah. channels uh how to do outreach uh, i myself i specialize in doing like this digital um outreach campaigns with email and how to reach and f find your different leads uh for example for linkedin mm. and how to optimize that as a tool for for getting sales for yourself but then i would also like cover how to like what is kind of like the path with sales for example in online like what is the first meeting what like what does that um include like okay of course you're going to introduce yourself and introduce the company but what what is the path to like getting the sales closed like yeah when do you send your offer uh, how do you negotiate um what what presentation materials you have to have when do you send the mm. contract and so on so that's like the path is really important to kind of like yeah. used to run a pre-incubator i was never expecting them to be able to get to the point of sales because it's, it was just the early early stage when you decide like okay i want to be an entrepreneur so we'll teach you how to be an entrepreneur kind of one-on-one basic of how to build these basic blocks of a uh, of a company uh, or not even a company like the idea of a company and basic validate that you you have uh, an idea in itself that someone might want to invest or buy it and so we never touch upon the sales part i believe it's something quite important at the moment and yeah i agree with sonia that one should try to teach them how to do the deal flow of the sales from the perspective even from the cold call that it's the most difficult one to get answers from potential clients that way up to follow and leads creating the proposal or providing the service and engaging them and actually getting to the point that you get the, the contract and and someone pay, paying you that that actually like should be our main goal at the end of the day like getting their first client yeah my takeaway is uh, it's super important that people know how to sell and because at the end, these are early stage startups or vendors. And if they don't know how to position themselves in that pipeline, what they are asking for, uh, 
what I want for Nexus 2 is that people get away from the mindset of funding. Like, give me money for funding mm -hmm. my banker. Yeah. I'm more on, I have the value to provide through this mm -hmm. uh, product and service. And give me money, but I sell you. So we exchange things. I give you a product or a service or a technology, and you give me money back. So it's not give me free money. I agree that it's, it's kind of a, a mentality on, on the startup scene of uh, young entrepreneurs mm -hmm. just wanting to create an idea and get an investment, original investment, and then just do a good valuation and then sell the company and become rich, like mm -hmm. in, the, in the spectrum of two, three years. And that, that's something that is actually like not really good because like not you need to produce something you need to sell a product like I, to actually do that and and it's a mentality and yeah. that's what we're trying i think to do here is to, to focus again on on okay let's build this company and let's grow this company and you're gonna be with this company along the way yeah of course exit points is are are good and and it's something that one should think about it but the main goal of entrepreneur is actually like build the company itself okay. we have three different checkpoints where we are doing the program checking or that's my session mm -hmm. and with the teams themselves checking what they need to deliver so we have different timelines now so we have the whole program here and then the deliverables okay so the teams yes. will need to deliver certain things during the 26 weeks and then in the checkpoints we check the deliverables so, so do you have like on the only checkpoint during the lead 17 or or do you have like these milestones between yeah. all of these sessions yeah there are milestones that are shared internally for the teams right yeah, and some of these sessions are yeah. shared with biosphere let's get to the biosphere then cool um okay so perfect so first from the differentiation between incubator and pre-incubator the first thing is like in pre-incubators are designed for people to validate ideas mm -hmm. itself and to try to find up teams. So pre-incubators are low threshold, a little bit intensive, quite intensive between 11 to 16 sessions during two months. So they're sort of like a sprint on entrepreneurship right. 101 yeah. on how to build a company. What entrepreneur needs to know uh, for them to be able to set a company and validate an idea. Less than a month ago, I think, or a month ago, I, I was appointed as the person running Biosphere. So, woohoo! Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, Biosphere is the incubator that works in bio and circular economy. But under this bio and circular economy, there is a lot of topics and subtopics. So, we we basically try to narrate to from agribusiness going through green hydrogen decarbonization, battery technology, because everything is related with the environment, right? So you got also biomass, bi water and uh, water treatment and, and so on. So yeah, as well, like, like Nexus is a six month program. It has 27 sessions at the moment. Similarly, we have a good focus on, a, on pitching, a storytelling. Every session, two, three teams will start presenting. But another focus that we are putting right now, it's a lot of a product development and product validation. So we are, we are starting with the teams to try to teach them the importance of engaging in an early stage of the process of creating an MVP or a, or a proof of concept with potential clients and how to include that feedback into the way they are doing their, their business. We are partnering at the moment. I just need to confirm if the person is gonna be able to come. Uh, experts that has worked on a design and product design for over 10 years on how to do this process. Mm. Do you have to be a uh, University of Health student in order to participate both biosphere? Not at all. You just need to be uh, here in the metropolitan area of Helsinki. Like it's open for everyone. Right. So everyone right. can apply, everyone can come in. Mm. Yeah, we, we talk a lot about the focus of the University of Helsinki and the students and the research and so on, but that's, that's because where we are located. Mm. But the program is open for everyone. And yeah, so it seems that uh, the program is very, very close to Nexus. I think we have uh, eight sessions together out of the 27. Nice. So yeah. we have, we ha out of, yeah, so we still have 19 that are independent uh, sessions. Slush week. Yay. Yay. Every time of the year. 
How yes. do you, um, how do you like regard the slush in your programs? Do you have some kind of like prepping sessions or? Yeah, well, preparations are all the time pitching because that's the place where they need to deliver a message mm. and being active, engaging with people. So get out of your little area and go to engage people. In Biosphere, especially like afterwards, mm -hmm. we go to the component of sales and a marketing, sales and a funding. So that's try to leverage on, on a slush week result to create that, that type of deal flow. I would say for the teams that take those things personal, because some things are about mm. work or dynamics exactly. in work. Mm. Yeah. And often people confuse the personal aspect with yes. the work aspect. Mm -hmm. So, and also from the projects uh, or the incubators, it's good to tell for people like this is the reality. You will face confrontation. Not everything is the roses in there because yeah. some of the programs in the world are, are focused on everything is perfect. Entrepreneurship is a case and you will have dialogue forever. It doesn't work that way. You will need to f have the fight to fight between egos. Mm. And it, this is a team, so the teams are going to fight and so on. But keep the competition healthy. Each program has its its own uh, approach to what they should be look like. Biosphere, it's more to not towards the accelerator part, but most towards the incubator. So where where you can incubate, as the name say, like so you can grow up your idea, your solution, and that's why I mentioned at the beginning, up to the point that you are ready either to pilot it, so you have an MVP, you have a PO, a proof of concept if you are research based, or you are ready to present your company to an investor and you know what you're going to do and how much it will cost you and how much money and what time frame you need for investing that money. We share uh, from our manager a view that 70 to 80 percent of the programs must have the business component. With that, I've been struggling like because sometimes the incubators can be like, you know, graveyard. Yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> so kind of like I hope that the, you know people who come there doesn't like get buried in a sense. Yeah, Tremor is the the city center a uh, campus incubator, so it's more it's more towards social impact and social driven uh, solutions and ideas. Teams are looking for solutions that have a social driven passion behind, or that try to solve a social problem. That's the place for them to be. The the Tremor already has a really nice pool of uh, entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and experts on different fields are over there. Uh, so I believe that if you want to build this type of, of company, it doesn't have like it doesn't have to have the mentality of being a startup and a scalable startup. Like if you want to build a consultancy, for instance, in climate change or how to advise companies on how to do a green transition, that might be one option for, for Tremor at the moment. Or if you go up to build a cooperative that just wants to run a sauna, cooperative sauna somewhere in Finland, <laughs> that's also an option. It there is. is a team in Tremor doing that, so yeah. But that will be interesting, how do you make that type of business, sauna business, in a scalable? Uh, that's the thing, the, the, the objective of them is not to be such yes. a scalable, yeah. but rather how to actually translate the social impact into mm -hmm. into a economic impact and economic resources. Yeah. For my personal experience, I built a non-profit organization back in Colombia when right. I was living there. Okay. So a, a program like Tremor will have helped me a lot on understanding how to build a finance not of the programs I was implementing, but of my organization itself. Yeah. I think that uh, just follow us on social media, especially LinkedIn. I think that that's kind of important because there is, is the place that we, we basically update constantly and we promote our events either there or uh, also we have an Instagram as well. Mm. Uh, but yeah, because like more of of these like open events, like low threshold open events of pizza and beer and things like that are, are going to start coming into the into our agenda. So if you are more interested about entrepreneurship, get to know what we're doing. If you want to be an entrepreneur, if you feel like you want to build a company and you need more help, uh, just your place reach please. us. Yeah. Or, so. Ciao. 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 Ciao.